Have you ever noticed why more than 90% of the names on the real-time billionaires list by Forbes invest in the stock market? Or are you wondering how investing in stocks has changed the lives of many people? Well, if it worked for them, it can also work for you. Sit tight because today you're going to familiarize yourself with the biggest secret of the 21st century. Before we move on, make sure you press the like and subscribe button so that you don't miss out on anything related to passive income and financial freedom. Welcome to Five Star Finance, the place where you learn how to achieve financial freedom. Buying equities with the potential to be switched for less than their real or intrinsic value is known as value investing. Value investors look for stocks that are undervalued and underappreciated by the market. They believe that the market exaggerates, causing stock prices to fluctuate dramatically, as well as a company's underlying fundamentals. The price movement provides an opportunity to profit by purchasing shares at a discount or on a special offer. Warren Buffett is the most well-known successful investor, but there are so many others, notably Buffett's professor and mentor, Benjamin Graham, Charlie Munger, David Dodd, Christopher Brown, Peter Lynch, John Templeton, and renowned hedge fund manager, Seth Klarman. To spend effectively over a period, you don't need a high IQ, a top-notch financing degree, or insider knowledge. What you'll need is a fundamental understanding of how the stock market works, a technique for identifying solid firms to invest in, and the ability to avoid letting emotions get in the way of your plan. Guidelines. Value investing is defined as buying equities that appear to be selling for under their intrinsic or net worth. Professional investors are on the lookout for equities that they believe are undervalued by the marketplace. They consume financial research, they don't follow the crowd, and they invest in high quality firms for the long run. Let us first understand the concept of value investing. The fundamental belief behind daily value investing is simple if you have the idea of what something is worth. You might be saving a bundle of cash by purchasing items on sale. For example, whether people buy a new TV on sale or at full price, you will get the same screen size and visual quality. Many people will agree to that. Value investing is the procedure of conducting research to discover hidden stock sales and buying them at a lower price than the market value. Investors might be generously pleased for purchasing and keeping these bargain companies for the long term. When a stock's shares are underrated, it's denoted to be inexpensive or reduced in the stock market. Value investors try to find an advantage from shares that they have faith in that are undervalued. Have you ever wondered about the metrics used to value a company's stock? We'll look no further. Price to book. It is often known as a book value that associates the value of a firm's resources to the price of the stock, as it is unrewarding when the price is below the value of the assets if the firm is not in financial distress. Price to earnings. It specifies the records of the salaries of businesses to check if the price of the stock is inexpensive or not, reflecting all of the pay. The money received from a firm's income or accomplishments after all costs and spendings have been withheld is known as free cash flow. The leftover cash after all the payments have been funded is the free cash flow. Such as operational expensive and substantial purchases are known as capital expenditures. For example, buying of the tools or the advancement of a manufacturing plant. Suppose that a firm produces free cash flow, it will have a lot of cash in the future to invest, pay down debt, pay bonuses or motivation to investors, and buy back shares. Do you know that value investors require considerable flexibility in their valuation estimates? They often create a margin of safety that depends on the tolerance of their risk. The cushion of security theory, which asserts that stock trading at a premium improves your risk of increased profitability subsequently when you resell them, is one of the fundamentals of efficient value investing. If the company doesn't perform as predicted, the margin of safety increases your risk of losing money. The same logic is used by value investors. Suppose that a stock is at a $100 valuation and someone purchases it for $66, they will generate $34 just by waiting for the rise in the price of the stocks to its real value of $100. Moreover, if the price of the stock increases up to $110, they'll generate revenue of around $44 since they developed it on sale. They'd only make a $10 profit if they bought it at the full price of $100. Markets are not efficient. The effective market concept states that stock prices by this time take all information about a firm into account and that their price constantly characterizes its worth. Value stockholders disagree and they consider that stocks are high priced or cheapened for a variety of reasons. For instance, a stock may be undervalued as a result of the economy's bad performance, which has caused investors to panic and sell. Or a company might be overvalued because stockholders are overly enthusiastic about a breakthrough technology that has yet to be demonstrated. Constructed on occasions such as unsatisfactory or surprising wages releases, product recalls or lawsuits, psychological favoritisms can push a stock price higher or lower. Do you guys know that the strategic way of purchasing a cheap stock is to oversee comprehensive research and make sound selections? Christopher H. Brown, who is a value investor, suggests determining if a firm is expected to raise revenue by the resulting methods, the increasing product expenses, the sale numbers are rising, lowering expenditures, unprofitable divisions are being sold or shut down. Brown also advises evaluating a company's future growth chances by looking at its competitors and rivalries. However, all of the answers to these questions are theoretical with no solid supporting numerical evidence. 
Moreover, there are currently no measurable software explanations accessible to assist in obtaining these solutions, making value stock investing a great guessing game. As a result, the famous Warren Buffett has said and given the best advice to invest in those exclusive businesses of which you have the best knowledge. Moreover, he further explained that people need to work and invest in those businesses whose consumer items are easy to understand and you somehow know about the process and have an interest in it. Analyze earnings reports. Value investors must examine a firm's financials at some point to assess its performance and compare it to industry peers. The annual report of a corporation may teach you a lot. It will describe the company's goods and services as well as its plans. Analyze financial statements. The balance sheet of a business gives a comprehensive view of the firm's financial situation. The balance sheet is divided into two sections. One that lists the firm's assets and the other that lists the liabilities and equity. Money and cash equivalents, savings, accounts receivable or money due from customers, inventory, and fixed assets such as plant and equipment make up the asset sector. Accounts unsettled or money owing, accumulated responsibilities, short-term debt and long-term debt are all included in the liability section. The shareholder's equity portion indicates the amount of money invested in the firm, the number of outstanding shares and the amount of retained earnings. The company's cumulative gains are held in retained earnings, which is a form of savings account. Retained earnings, for example, are used to pay dividends and are considered an indication of a robust, prosperous business. The income statement reveals the amount of money earned, as well as the company's costs and profits. Because many organizations encounter swings in sales volume throughout the year, viewing the yearly earnings statement rather than a three-monthly statement can give you an improved understanding of the firm's overall status. To every pro, there's a con. Well, there are certain risks in value investing. Despite being a very low-risk approach, value investing has the danger of loss like every other investment plan. We've highlighted a handful of these dangers, as well as why they can lead to losses. The importance of figures. When it comes to value investing, many investors rely on financial figures. If you rely on your research, ensure you have the most up-to-date data and that your calculations are correct. If you don't, you risk making a bad investment or missing out on a good one. Continue to study these subjects if you aren't sure in your ability to understand and interpret financial documents and reports, and don't make any transactions until you are. Surprising gains or losses. Some events that appear on a firm's earnings statement should be treated as extraordinary. These are known as exceptional items, which are gain or extraordinary items that are actually a loss and are usually further than the firm's control. Suits, reorganization, and even natural disaster are among the instances. You can gain an idea of the company's future success if you omit these from your investigation. However, if you consider these issues cautiously, then you have to use your best judgment because it's possible that a company's reporting of the same remarkable item year after year isn't all that extraordinary. Also, if the firm has unanticipated losses year after year, it may be a clue that the organization is experiencing financial difficulties. Astonishing products are meant to be one of a kind and one of a kind only. A trend of write-offs should also be avoided. The bottom line, an approach referred to as long-term value investing is used by a lot of hefty investors. We can take the example of the great Warren Buffett, as he is one of the leading business tycoons who used to buy stock and then keep them for a long time. He once declared that he never tried to earn through the stock market and used to purchase on the expectation that the market would close the next day and would not reopen for five years. When it's time to make a significant purchase or retire, you undoubtedly want to sell your stocks, but by diversifying your portfolio and keeping a long-term vision, you'll be able to sell your stocks only when their prices surpass their fair market worth and the price you paid for them. Now, in order to start your journey as a value investor, you need to know about the six stock categories that are each different to analyze. For that purpose, we've provided a free ebook in the link given below. Make sure you go through the six stock categories and improve your precision when evaluating opportunities in the stock market to buy those bargains with more certainty. So how do you plan to start your journey as an investor? Let us know about your investing plans in the comments section below. Subscribe and turn on notifications so that you never miss another video. Check out this video we handpicked for you and we'll see you in the next one.